Call the show now and let your voice be heard. 274-5297. AM 700 KBYR. And welcome back to Hour 3 of the Big Radio Broadcast. The Michael Duke Show on AM 700 KBYR. Alaska Talks here. Uh, we've been hearing a lots of uh, uh, we've been hearing lots about, of course, this new rape culture in America, uh, and how it it seems to be, uh, you know, I mean, some of these things like oh, we, we should just teach men not to rape, and some of these other things, and then of course, uh, it's just it's, it's a lot of spin and a lot of blame that's going around a lot of times for people who have no idea exactly what's happening and are uh, and are in fact. Um, um, uh, innocent of what's going on. Uh, but we continue to see these things. Jonathan Taylor is the founder and publisher of A Voice for Male Students. After graduating with a degree in English, he became an instructor uh, and a tutor of remedial and at-risk students in the A&M system, uh, being the first of his siblings to receive a post-secondary education and working construction jobs to fund his education. Uh, he uh, looked uh, upon universities as beacons of enlightenment, where skepticism and reason were widely regarded as virtue, but... He quickly discovered a very different side of education when he got there. Part of that, of course, is the social climate on U.S. campuses dealing specifically with this thing that we're talking about right here, this rape culture. And he joins us on the program this morning to talk more about it. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? You know, not uh, not too bad. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of these discussions going on. In fact, we've had two pieces in our local newspaper here. It's a, a statewide newspaper. The opinion pieces that have basically come out and said, you know, men, it's your fault for not teaching your own boys and children to stop rape and, and to for not stopping your fellow men from raping and doing all these other kind of things. And it's wrong to tell women that they should be prepared you know, to be able to defend themselves in those situations, because then you're just blaming it on them. And and this is just part and parcel of this kind of whole concept of, um, you know, I, I I don't even know how to how to term it. Uh, maybe you've maybe you've come up with a coined a phrase or something that that kind of synopsizes the whole deal. But the bottom line here is is that you know we do have a problem, but the problem is the rapists themselves. It's not society per se. It's not individual men as a as a gender. Uh, it is it is the each individual perpetrator of these crimes, right? Right, definitely. And you know, there was a, an organization called Rain, uh, which stands for Rape, Abuse, Incest, Something Network, and uh, they actually came out and uh, this, they're like one of the largest advocacy organi- organizations for sexual abuse victims, and they actually came out against the narrative of feminists, and they said, no, no, the problem is. Uh, you know, there's just a few, a few individual men who themselves uh, tend to be, you know, to commit these crimes, uh, who are serial rapists, and they're the ones committing, uh, committing most of these crimes. And really, you know, uh, the reality is that you know, rape is not an epidemic on college campuses. There's too much. Uh, I, I think you know, one rape is too many, of course. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's a significant problem on some campuses, but. But the notion that it's an epidemic and that our culture, you know, generally supports rape, that, that's, that's totally ludicrous. You know, even before feminism emerged, we were lynching and executing people for rape. You know, we, we are brought up in a culture where, you know, we, we protect and provide for, where men are supposed to protect and provide for women. Uh, feminism has, has got it, you know, in, in most cases they've got it just completely reversed. And uh, this is just one of those cases. Well, and and I think you're you're exactly right. I mean, uh, coming coming back to say, I mean, to really one of the most ludicrous things that I've ever heard is somebody said, "We need to teach our boys not to rape." And I'm thinking, wait, isn't that in kind of the whole concept of we don't, you know, we not we're not uh, assaulting anybody, we're not taking things that aren't ours, we aren't. I mean, isn't that whole part of the childhood? Do we specifically need to say, uh, you know, during? Uh, and I mean, I think. We do, really. If you sit down and have the talk with your sons, then you say, you know, uh, you, you talk about, you know, what is appropriate and what is not and why, you know. I mean, I, I just, to, the implication here is that if you don't teach your children specifically not to rape, then, of course, they are going to be potential rapists. Uh, is, is well, it, am I wrong on that? or? 
Well, you know, I, it's an interesting conversation because here's the thing. You know, if you believe, as feminists do, that we should teach men not to rape, then certainly what's good for the goose should also be good for the gander. You know, we should also be able to teach, you know, women not to make false rape accusations. But you know what? There are actually groups that have come out and followed up behind feminist campaigns, poster campaigns, and said, you know, teach men not to rape campaigns, and followed up with teach women not to make false rape accusation campaigns. And can you imagine what the feminist response to to this concept was? They 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 hated it, but what they were hating was was just a mirror of their own. You know, it was the the follow up campaign was kind of to demonstrate to the feminists how they were really acting. You know, when it comes to teaching uh, little kids, uh, who you know, when you give them the talk, I think there does need to be you know a general discussion about consent sure. and to to not be pressured into you know not not just to not pressure someone into doing something they're uncomfortable with, but also not to not to give in to something that you're uncomfortable with. But as far as, like, zeroing in on, on men specifically and singling them out, you know, and saying, oh, by the way, you know, almost almost kind of giving them, like, a, a, a probationary status, you know, as you know, it, it's just, no, it, we're, we're treating them. Uh, the, the feminist culture really, uh, feminism really, really treats these young men as though they are proto-rapists. Uh, simply for being born male. And we need to stop looking at men that way. Right. Jonathan so. Taylor of VoiceForMaleStudents.com is who we're talking to. You know, again, going back to if you look at the anatomy, uh, you know, the psychology of a rapist, you know, they are... Uh, you know, they're, they're sociopathic. They hide in plain sight. Like you said, the recidivism rate among rapists is, I mean, it's huge. Like in the 65, 70 plus percent range, most of them are repeat rapists. Um, and so these kind of things, you know, are known about them. But the big thing is, is that they hide in plain sight. So this accusation of, you know, it's a men problem and men, you should, you should go out and fix it. That was the, actually the article back in November here. Alaska's rape problem is an Alaskan man problem. And it goes on to talk about how, you know, again, it's the men who should be doing these things. And it's like, but we don't even know. We don't know that the guy next to us in line is a rapist. Why? Because he's got the good face on and he can get away with it and he can emulate emotions and he can do all these things. And he's done it time and time and time again. You know, so mm -hmm. how, how are we supposed to know? Um, you yeah. Know, it's it's a yeah. very frustrating situation, and um, you know how do folks find out more about you know overcoming this uh, and and uh, take care of this as we wind this up, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, as far as how to uh, take action against like these, yeah. these biases, exactly these, these harmful messages. Yeah. Well, you know, just just speak out about it. Just you know, find find the courage to speak out about it. A lot of people are just afraid, and so whenever you hear this narrative being pushed, you know, you know, speak in truth, speak in fairness that say, you know, hey, you know, it, it's wrong to be singling out, you know, one sex like this, you know, and, and I say, you know, don't just call it political correctness, call it what it is, call it sexism, you know, challenge them on their own, on their own turf, and, you know, when, once you do that, it starts opening up a whole, whole new conversation, Right. and so I, I find that that is most effective. Jonathan Taylor of VoiceForMaleStudents.com. We've got your link up on our website. You've got plenty of information and facts so people are armed with the truth when they go out there and have these discussions. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We've got more coming up. We didn't even get to the fact that Rolling Stones has now retracted their article about the UVA incident. Maybe we'll get Jonathan back to talk about that here in the near future. Thanks so much. we got more coming up, including Brian Landry.